So here's the deal. There is a gem and mineral shop locally that I didn't know existed until like a weekend ago. Um, I'm, I saw through the window what they had, but they were closed the time I was here. They've just reopened. I think today's their first day. So I'm going to go and see if I can get some video inside there while I geek out on some gemstones because I am so eager to see what they have. I can't believe I didn't know this place was here. It's like in, a, I don't know how to describe this, almost like an office building kind of setting on the upper floor. So there's like retail stores on the bottom. I've been to those retail stores. I didn't realize that you could go into like these specific doors and ride the elevator up to their shop. So I'm going to go check it out. And hopefully he lets me record in there. He, the owner, which I presume is a man. I really, I guess I don't know. I don't know why I would assume that. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> hopefully I can get some video. Let's go try. Okay, so sorry to show you a freeze frame, but this is where I totally dropped the ball on recording. <laughs> I accidentally did the thing. I'm sure we've all been there where you hit the record button and then you didn't actually hit the record button. And then when you go to stop it, you start the recording. <laughs> I did that twice, twice in this trip. So unfortunately all I have from the first recording is just the still frame, but this is the display that you see as soon as you walk into the door. There were, even though you can't tell, like three or four tiers of shelving on this central display and everything on it was amazing. Such beautiful specimens. I mean, absolutely stunning. And the lighting he had in there, and it was in fact a he, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, the owner, he just, he did such a good job setting the store up and showing off all these, all these specimens best quality. So that was really cool to see. Here's another video that I failed at. <laughs> this is actually, that same display case, this is the opposite side of it. Yeah, this is the top shelf here with some items on it. It was uh, less expensive on the top and then they, the specimens got larger and more expensive towards the bottom. So here's a video. And uh, in this one, this is just a bunch of small specimen displays. And as you can see, he has even larger ones as you look around and they were just so impressive. And the quartz ones, I always am drawn to quartz, anything in the quartz family, and especially giant like points like that. I just, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I zoom in on those a lot. Um, the other specimens I saw that I didn't really get a good shot of here, uh, one of the ones I really was attracted to was a celestite, because that's on my wish list. And then this one over here, I think they call it a dragon's egg. I'll have to look that up but it's just polished to look like this egg and you can kind of see here a little bit anyway, um, this interior of the egg, quote unquote, which is kind of a druzy look to it. And then again, more quartz that's amazing and even more quartz here in the form of citrine, which was stunning. And this big old chunk of malachite, OMG, OMG. <laughs> I'm not even like the biggest fan of malachite, but Wow, that was a super impressive piece. And then as you walked around, you saw that there was also jewelry. Uh, the jewelry was more, I, I don't wanna say limited. They did have quite a few pieces, but um, not anything. They had a ton of like loose gemstones galore. But as far as like a jewelry store style thing, you're not gonna walk in there and see a bunch of, you know, gem gemstones set into like precious metals or anything like that. There were a couple things. Um, and there were these rings, which were super cool. There's these ammonites, I believe they were set in sterling. And then these wire wrapped uh, double terminated points here. There's malachite, I think that was maybe some dyed halite perhaps. Uh, and some gold stone. Just really, really neat. And uh, prior to that, there's some pendants, basically any stone you wanted, set into a silver tone wrap. And those are pretty neat. And then this, which, oh my gosh, how cool is this? I saw this at the very end. Somehow I missed it walking in the door, but it's a giant, giant, as you can see by my hand, uh, specimen of calcite, I believe you said it was. At first I thought it was citrine, but um, the terminations didn't look quite right, but the color did, but uh, no, 
but it's amazing nonetheless. It was so pretty. And on the opposite side of the door, I took a video of it, but apparently I didn't actually do that, it was a, <laughs> a giant uh, amethyst specimen that you often see it in doorways, um, often as like a cleansing thing. So there you go. That was, that was the store. But I wanted to show you what I picked up because I did buy a few things. And that is where I'm, that's where I'm going with this video now. So the first thing I saw and the thing I couldn't say no to was this pyrite specimen. I am such a sucker for pyrite. I think it's maybe just how sparkly it is, honestly, because the larger chunks of it that are like big cubes, because they, they form like cubed uh, crystals, they don't appeal to me as much, but these smaller ones, oh. And look at that flash. And this, this lighting isn't even the best for things like this, but you can even see just looking at it in this lighting, how awesome it is. And in the store, it just, it me immediately caught my eye. I mean, I, I went and picked this up first before I even got anything else or recorded anything else or looked at anything else. I just grabbed this. Um, I do want to say before I even continue, uh, he gave me the okay one to record, which was awesome, and two to give out his information. So I'm going to do that really quickly on his business card um, so that I don't lose people at, at the end. <laughs> if anyone's interested, I want to get the information out. His name is Anthony, and uh, let me turn this the right way. There you go. Located in Charlottesville. So I went to Charlottesville, which is one of um, the nearby cities where I live because I live out in the country. Charlottesville, Virginia. But they do ship and his prices were so reasonable, especially for being a retail shop. I do a lot of looking around for specimens online and in different, you know, little shops that have like the crystal, you know, advertise they have crystal specimens and, you know, more unique gemstone, semi-precious uh, jewelry, things like that. This is the best I've seen, to be honest with you. Um, very, very reasonable prices. Uh, that, there you go. So all his information is there. If you want to email him, feel free. It's info at ExcaliburMineral.com. Um, or if you have any questions for me about him, you know, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll help you get in contact. He was just such a nice guy. So then the coolest part was he let me tour the back of the of the store. He actually offered. It wasn't, I didn't ask. He offered. Oh man, I was so pumped. I was like, uh, yes, I would like to see your hidden warehouse of wonder. And let me tell y'all, it was, oh my gosh, there's so much space back there. The front of the store is just a fraction of the rest of the place. And there were mineral specimens all over. There was a library back there. There was like a little research area and then shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of specimens. And they were like, oh my gosh, every size. Oh, there's, oh, I loved it. <laughs> I really want to go back to my husband. I don't know if I'll get lucky enough to get the tour again, but maybe if I ask nice. This is another piece I got. So this is technically citrine. However, um, this one is from Brazil. And he was, um, Anthony was explaining to me that often the uh, citrine that comes from there is heat treated and the, the um, specimens they use to create the citrine are like the more pale amethyst. So this is actually kind of an example of that. And the neat thing about that is you can see, hopefully, that there's still purple in there. And that's actually what kind of drew me into this because I've never really seen heat treated. I mean, I've probably seen it before and I just didn't know because it was, you know, done properly. <laughs> Let's be honest. This one um, still has some remaining purple in it. I thought that was neat. And uh, I just, I love the little crystals, the little crystal terminations there. So cool. I hear children. I hear children running amok. Okay. This one is neat too. So this is another piece from Brazil and it is called a window quartz. So you can see it's totally Sorry, it's tumbled all on the back side. I'm wondering, I'm assuming they probably took it and tumbled it. I guess it could have been naturally tumbled via water. But when you turn it over, they have cut it and polished it. 
on the top so you can see into the crystal. It has all these, or into the quartz, um, inclusions in it that just give it such visual interest. And I just love this piece. I think it's really cool. I was originally considering, because the prices are that good, I was considering possibly reselling this one. But I don't know if I can let it go. I just think that's so neat. I love it. I will say, if you find something interesting like this and you want me to pick it up and send it to you, like with one of your orders, so that you don't have to make two different orders, I'd be happy to do that for you. So just let me know. Um, not that I'm going to be like a runner for every mineral that you want <laughs> from the store, but, uh, you know, I can see what I can do. All right, so that's that one. Oh, that, I'll have to save that one for later. Oh, that one too. Uh, I just love everything I got today. Part of the little pick. We'll go with this one. Keeping on the quartz theme. We have a smoky quartz. Unfortunately, I didn't get the exact origin of this one. I forgot to ask, but he did write down the other ones for me. This one I just forgot about. But how, how beautiful is that? And it's so dark too. I mean, it's almost like a black quartz. You can not see through it very well. In some parts you can, but isn't that amazing? cut from the matrix on the back you can still see that quartz finish it looks almost like a like a quartz countertop that's what it reminds me of <laughs> like an unpolished version of it but man the star of the show is the front of this thing i'll tell you i only paid 35 dollars for this this is how reasonable the prices are that is a honker of a piece and oh my gosh I really, really like this one. I'm so excited. I can't wait to put this stuff in my display case. Who cannot wait. So let's put it up in there. Alright. So this, I guess I'll do this one. I'll do my husband's favorite last. I'm gonna need my cheat sheet for this one because I can never remember what this main stone is called or how to pronounce it. Someone's gonna look at this and be like, it's there, it's there. Oh my gosh, I can never remember. Dolomite, it's Dolomite. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading that, his handwriting. I can read everything except for that word and it's probably because I'm unfamiliar with it. Dolomite. That is what this main piece here is. And again, another piece that was sparkling like crazy and caught my eye. And I was leaving the store and this was on the bookcase and uh, I saw it walking out and he, this was the last one. It was like, I was already getting rung up for everything else. And uh, I threw this one in too because I couldn't resist. So it's dolomite with little pieces of pyrite on it. And then this big old honker of a piece here is calcite. And this one is from Missouri, actually a specimen from Missouri. And this just makes me so excited and I'll tell you why. It reminds me of plants and just in the way that with plants you get like situations where there's different plants that all love a specific setup <laughs> like the temperature is right the pH level and the soil is right and they all start like competing for the space and that's what these crystals are doing here they're all kind of competing for the space and instead they just you know, morphed into each other and they all shared the space and made a absolutely stunning specimen. My favorite part is the end here, the little termination there. There's like a three point termination. I'll have to look and see if that's naturally how that occurs or if that was just um, polished off that way. Maybe it broke off and was sharp so they just polished off. It's hard to tell because it's so it's so perfect, but it's similar on the other side, so it makes me feel like it's natural. I'll have to look up and see how many um, faces or facets, terminations on calcite have. All right, and then the last one. I got something on the floor. This was my husband's favorite. And I'm sorry, I'm getting rock dust everywhere, but I have to show you this. 
doesn't look like much, does it? Until you turn it over and realize that it's a sweet geode. It's a chalcedony, uh, depending on who you ask and how you pronounce it. Crystal formation in the center there. Is that not just the coolest thing? This was $45, price tag still on there. Totally, totally awesome price. And it's high polished, you can see, let me almost say high polished, but polished anyway, pretty good on the outside there. And you can just see all these layers of rocks and it's just so cool. I just love it. I just love it. And the way geodes form, the thing is crystals, like they like to form in cracks like that. They like to like, cr like fill those spaces in. That's why a lot of times with agate slices, for example, they're like in the process of, uh, of doing that, of filling up the space, filling up the gap. That's why sometimes you get the agate slices that are super like druzy. -y. That's not a thing. <laughs> but you know they have a ton of druzy in the center because they're in the process of, and sometimes holes in the center too, they're in the process of filling that gap. And sometimes they make it all the way. That's why your agate slices don't have that druzy in the center. They're just solid, like, you know, rings all the way through. And this eventually would probably do the same thing. But it was found and cut open and fancy, fancied up as it is now. Conditions have changed. It's not under the temperature or the pressure or anything else to keep forming. So it's just going to hang out like this for the rest of its days, I suppose. And just be beautiful forever. How cool is that? I just cannot get over these, these lines too. The layers. Oh, it's so cool. I just love it. Okay. All right. <laughs> and that's the last piece. So there you have it. I don't know if I can fit all of them in frame, but I'm sure it's going to try. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's just perfect. Ooh, I knocked my camera. Ruining the entire thing. Ha. Ha. There it is. This perfect assortment of mineral specimens. Forever mine. All right. <laughs> That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. That's a little out of the norm. And, uh... I hope you enjoyed watching me geek out over gemstones and or minerals, I should say, because I just think I just think they're so gorgeous. I really do. All right, that's it for this one. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And let me know in the comments, what's your favorite mineral? I want to know your favorite gemstone, like faceted and set in jewelry, and I'd love to know your favorite mineral too, just to stare at and have sit on a shelf and be pretty. Okay, all right. Thank you for commenting in advance. Mm -hmm. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.